Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you A Killing in Abilene, a suspense play starring Mr. Alan Ladd. traveled hard for 300 miles to find the man who killed my brother. I'd come down out of the Snake Range that morning, followed the river trail through the canyon, and that afternoon had found Pleasant Valley. A handful of buildings, desolate and huddled in the cold shadows of the mountains around. Tall, dark. No man appeared as I rode through the town. Only a dog challenged, and he from a safe distance. Then it was quiet. About a quarter of a mile beyond an easy rise, I saw what had happened to the people of the town. There were maybe 60 or 70 standing in a circle. And as I got closer, I, I saw they were gathered around two men. Two men who were digging. You stay put, horse. There was a look on the faces of the people standing there. Even the kids peeking from behind skirts and trouser legs. And it was something I'd seen before. It wasn't a good look. It was the look some people had had two years before in Abilene. When we had discovered my brother's body. In just a moment, Mr. Alan Ladd in the first act of A Killing in Abilene. Hi, Harlow. Well, what do you got there? Christmas present, Hap. You got one already? Yes, sir. And it's an Autolite Stay Full battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Why, my car will really cut a caper over this capable Christmas cheer. You believe in giving your car some holiday spirit, too, eh, Harlow? I sure do, Hap. And because the Autolite Stay Full battery has over three times the liquid protection of batteries without Stay Full features... It helps eliminate one of the greatest causes of battery failure. And that's mighty important to the spirit of every car owner. And your gift will last a long, long time, too, Harlow. Right you are, because the Autolite Stay Full battery gives longer life. 70% longer life, in fact. As proved by tests conducted according to SAE minimum life cycle standards. A wise selection, Harlow. Yes, friends, for quick, dependable starting, treat your car to an Autolite Stay Full battery. The battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. See your neighborhood Autolite battery dealer. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with a killing in Abilene and the performance of Mr. Alan Ladd, Autolite answers many requests in bringing you a story of the Old West, hoping once again to keep you in... Suspense! What's the matter? I hit something. Wait. Better go slow. Dig around this side. Here, I I can't do it anymore. One of you boys take over. I'll do it, Jim. Somebody's got to. It's him, all right. I seen his shirt. You were right then, Dan. Jake? Jake Garvey? Sure, sure. Better come take a look. Yeah. That's him. That's Fred Costin, all right. Fred! Fred! Oh, Fred! <laughs> The other women folk led her away. The men stayed and pushed in a little closer to the pit and waited there until the job was finished. Then they noticed me. What are you doing here, stranger? Where are you from? You're the sheriff? That's right. Jake Garvey. Man is my name. 
from Abilene. So? I'm looking for a man in these parts. Calls himself Lee Burridge. Who did he say, Sheriff? He said Lee Burridge, Ben. You tell him we'll take care of him. What do you want him for? What's it matter what he wants him for? We know what we want him for. Come on. Now, there ain't going to be no trouble. I'm the law in Pleasant Valley. I'll say what we do. We elected you, Sheriff Jake. We could not elect you. Like Ben said, it was Burridge killed him, and you know it. I've got to talk to you about Burridge, Sheriff. It's important. All right. My office back at the meeting house. We don't need no talk about Burridge. We need to do something about the ugly son. Come down, boys. Let's get on back to town. We'll take her as she comes. No, thanks. The boys want to know why you're here. So do I. We don't like strangers. What do you want with Lee Burridge? I had a brother. Killed out in Abilene. Burridge did it. Oh? He and another one drove a herd into the railroad. Burridge got drunk and killed my brother. Buried him same as here. We found this pouch near the grave. His name burned into it. Taken me two years to find him. Now I want to talk to him about it. The boys are pretty sure he killed Fred Costin, too. So am I now. Maybe so. Fred Costin isn't my business. My brother is. And I want to see his killer back in Abilene standing trial. I made a promise I'd bring him back. That there'd be no more killing. We didn't know your brother, but we knew Fred and we liked him. You can help take care of Burridge here if you have a mind to. Try him here, you mean? On both charges? No need for that. Now, what do you mean, take care of him? How did he kill your brother? His head was beat in. He was beat to death. Yeah, same as he did to Fred. Man who'd do a thing like that don't need no trial. Not for you, maybe. But there'll be no more killing in my family. We'll give him a fair trial here in Abilene. But a fair trial. If Burridge's done these killings, he's going to pay for it here. I don't go for lynching. We don't call it lynching when we hang a man for murder. If you don't like it, go on back to Abilene. Maybe I'll do that. When I take Lee Burridge out for trial. I don't know what you're trying to do. I suspect it's get Burridge out of town. If I'm right, you're heading into a lot of trouble. Let's go get him, Ben. It's about time. One of you boys going to direct me to where Lee Burridge lives? We could. We felt inclined. What do you want with him? Just want to talk. Anybody got objections? Yeah. Who are you? Ben Chaffee. There ain't going to be no talking. He's done what he's done. He's going to pay for it. Ain't nobody going to stand in the way. It's time you was riding out of here. And if I don't? Then I'll help you. Climb off, Ben. We don't need no private wars here. Uh... Where does he live? Come on, boy. He turned away from me and moved into the sheriff's office, leaving me alone to walk down the strangely quiet street. Towards the hills, the thunderhead was beginning to gather, moving in slowly. Near the end of the street, two men were building a coffin in front of a small house. This is where I'll find Mrs. Carson. Why do you have to come meddling around here at a time like this? Can't you leave her with it for a sorrow? Because he's a stranger, Bob boy. Strangers don't have no time for other people's sorrow. Maybe you're right, old timer. Maybe they got too many themselves. Yes? I'd like to talk to you, ma'am. Could I come in? Well, can't you see this house is in mourning? Ma'am, I know how you feel. How can you know what I feel? I had a brother once. Killed by this man, Burge. Oh. I'd like you to help me. It was two years ago my brother was killed. His wife would like the killer brought back to Abilene for trial. I'd like you to speak to your friends and let me take him away. He didn't give my friend a chance before he killed him. He's a cruel, ugly man. He's a killing man. 
You can see it in his eyes. I understand how that woman feels. I feel the same way. I want him killed, too. But here, where I can watch... Will you tell me where he lives? Don't tell him nothing, Mrs. Carton. You'll go warn him off. Let him go if he wants. I say a man's got one life to live and he's got a right to lose it any dang way pleases him. I'll tell you where you can find Lee Burridge. A few miles outside of town where the canyon spread, I saw his hut. Set against a fire-blackened hill. There's no growing thing in the rocky ground except one sick, twisted tree. Stunted limbs reaching out empty, waiting. Hold it. Easy, horse. Easy. Now. Draw your gun down, you. Or I won't miss with the next one. Lee Burge? Draw it down. I'm Jeff Mander. It was my brother Seth you killed in Abilene. That's who you are. Caused me enough trouble. Get out of here. They'll give you a fair trial there. Stay here and you're going to be lynched for Fred Costin's killing. Don't come no closer. <laughs> Nobody's going to lynch me while I got this. Listen to me. I don't hold no love for you. I shouldn't care what happens to you. But it took me two years to find you, now I'm taking you out. Don't come no closer. Put up your gun. I'm warning you. Put up your gun. <laughs> I knew he was shooting to miss. But I didn't know what would happen if I moved closer. So I got out of his canyon. It was clouding over heavy when I rode into town again. Maybe an hour, hour and a half after I'd left the sheriff's office. The streets were still empty. But in a couple of the houses, I saw curtains move in windows and shadows duck away as I looked at them. I wondered if the old man had told them I'd gone to see Birch. And if they knew what they planned doing about it. Old timer? Yeah. See, you had to talk with Burridge. You see. You ain't wearing a gun. You get the drop on you? Yeah. Surprised he didn't kill you. So was I. Did you tell them I'd gone there? Yep. What'd they say? They said if you get buried first, they'd get you. They said you should go back where you came from while you still can. I will after I settle with Burge. Where's the sheriff? I went off with the boys. After Burge? Yep. They're going to wait till dark. Then they're going to string him up. Why are they going to wait till dark? I want to be with them. I thought you didn't like lynchings. I don't, but I want to be there. Well, I was told if you come back to town, you'd have to be with them. Don't make me use this, son. Just turn around and we'll join the rest of them. All right. And I'd suggest you stop your talking about Lee Burridge. From what I overheard, you're close to sharing a rope with him. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Alan Ladd in A Killing in Abilene. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Well, Harlow, only eight shopping days till Christmas. Oh, well, that doesn't bother me, Hap. I'm giving everybody an Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Even folks without cars? Well, sure. Why should they be denied the pleasure of having that fine, fit, faithful friend that gives 70% longer life? It says who, Harlow? Why, everyone knows the Autolite Stay Full battery gives 70% longer life. And this is proven by tests conducted according to SAE minimum life cycle standards. Sounds mighty powerful. It sure does, and it's because every positive plate in an Autolite Stay Full battery is protected by a fiberglass retaining mat to help reduce shedding and flaking, 
and keep the power-producing materials in place. Go on, Harlow, go on. Well, friends, this Christmas, present your car with a famous Autolite Stay Full battery. A battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. See your neighborhood Autolite battery dealer tomorrow. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Alan Ladd in Elliot Lewis's production of The Killing in Abilene. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. We rode out of Pleasant Valley, the old man and me. We rode fast without speaking as we scattered herds of cattle on the lower rangeland. Rolling in from the east, the black cows smothered the mountaintops. The old man still held the gun on me. No use winning the horses. Won't be dark for a couple hours yet. Lynching parties get their guts after dark. How come you went with them? Waiting for you. I thought you'd be around. Besides, I seen the lynching once. Too much trouble. Yeah. You still figuring to take Burridge with you to Abilene? I can try. Ain't that going to be a mighty darren without a shooting iron? Might be. I'm surprised after two years looking for him, you didn't shoot him when you found him. That's not what I come for. Why not? Killed your brother. I uh, made a promise to somebody. Uh, his wife? Yeah. Mine, too. What was it between Costin and Burge? Well, I don't know. Nobody's seen much of Burge in the past couple of years. Ever since Ben told us about how he was a killer. Ugly man. Just ugly mean. You said Ben told all of you Burge was a killer? Yeah. Yes, your brother he killed. That right? That's right. And now because of him, you might get killed. But why? They think you made it up about your brother. They think you're trying to take Burridge away. Do you? Well, I haven't decided yet. Eh. We board the stream here. Oh, watch your footing. Sonny. Yeah? They haven't seen you yet. You still got time to get out. You let me go? No, no. I've come this far, I'll finish it. Well, I always said a man's got one life, and he's got a right to lose it any dang way pleases him. Hello, Chef. Thought you'd left Pleasant Valley. We decided he ought to come with us where we can watch him. You decided, Ben. What do you say, mister? I'll tell you what he says, Sheriff. He says he wants Burridge one way or the other. He has to join. That's what he says. Get off of the horse, mister. All right. Now say that lie to me and I'll make you choke on it. I want Burridge as bad as the rest of you. I'd prefer him to stand trial. That's the difference. I don't want this lynching if we can avoid it. Well, you... Take your hand off your gun, Ben. He ain't armed. Take it easy, Ben. We decided what to do. You're here because I want you here. Burge killed Fred Costin in a fight. Now we're going to settle it. Burge kills easy. I've seen him do it once before. He's not going to do it again. You saw him kill my brother? I, um... I thought you didn't believe me. I saw it. You need more of a trial than that. I looked at the faces, angry, filled with hate. And I thought of the ugly man up in the canyon in the broken down shack. I wondered if he knew what was waiting for him a mile or so away. It was quiet then. Storm clouds are quickening the end of the day. The party became shadows sitting nervously or smoking. 
Two of the men had some whiskey and were building their courage for the night's work. It's nearly dark. Uh, I didn't think you'd come. I had to. All the way? My Fred's dead. So was my brother. My Fred was a good man. Never hit me, but he was a dark man with drink. Like those two. What was it between Burge and him? We lost some chickens. Fred said that man stole them. When he came to town for supplies, Fred and him got to fighting. That man hated him and beat him. Fred was terrible hurt. Afterwards, everybody laughed and made jokes. They laughed at their friend? Oh, it was man laughing, no harm, but to a dark man like Fred, it was bad. He swore to get even. That was last Saturday. He went in to drink. And didn't come back. We all thought he rode out someplace for shame. Why do you think birds killed him? They were all talking about it. Who was? All the men, Saturday night. They said Fred and that man were arguing. Who heard them? Ben did. When Fred didn't come back, we all knew that man had killed him. He did, and he's going to pay for it. Who found the grave, ma'am? Ben did. I'm sorry for your brother's wife. But it's got to be this way. Just like the holy book says. An eye for an eye. Let's go, boys. It's time to ride. We rode to the widening of the canyon, dismounted, and went the rest of the way to the hut on foot. We took one horse with us. He's there, all right. There's a light inside. Hold up, boys. Bob, huh? you, Jim, and Needle, come with me. Right, sure. We'll bring him out. The rest of you stay here. What's the idea? You're too quick tonight, Ben, and given too many orders. You stay. Still trying to get him away, son? I might. <laughs> You're like an engine I knew once. Had to shoot him five times before he knew he was dead. What do you want here? Do you know what we want, Burridge? Get out of here. Get off my land. You come outside quiet like. We don't want no trouble. Trouble, I I ain't asking for trouble. You asked for it when you killed Fred Costin. Costin? Well, who killed... I didn't kill him. Save your breath while you still got it. Come on. Oh, look out. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go up in smoke. He won't be using it anymore. I'll get... kill you. I'll kill you all for this. You done get your last killing. Get, get that rope over that limb. Is this your doing, Ben? Shut up. Tie his hands, Bob. I'll hold him. You're going to blame this one on me, too, Ben? Shut up, I said. God. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Let it go, son. You can't stop him now. I've got to talk to him before they do. He didn't do it. Now I know it. Wait a minute. Take my gun. Thanks. The flames and the shadows flicked over the ugly man's face. The rope was around his neck. He knew he was going to die. But as I came near him, I could see in the light there was no fear in his eyes, only hate. Lifted onto a horse. The rope was tightened. And he was ready to be lynched. Then he saw me. One request, Sheriff. What, Burridge? Let me talk to him a minute. The stranger here? For a minute. No more talking. Kick that horse out from under him. No, don't, Bob. Not yet. Let him talk. Why do you think I killed your brother? They're trying to get away with something, Jake. Shut up, Ben. Let them have their say. Why? We found your pouch near my brother's grave. Your name on it. And tonight, Ben told me he saw you do it. I didn't. I wasn't with Ben that night. Ben wanted to drink, and I didn't. He left me. Took my pouch with him. What does it matter about his brother? It's Fred Costin we're hanging him for. I didn't kill Fred Costin either. 
This mister, I didn't kill your brother. He's talked enough. He killed Fred Costin. I told you that. What about it, Burge? I didn't kill Fred Costin. He's a lying skunk. Let's get it over with. I say let him talk. Where'd you get that gun, mister? How did you know where Fred was buried, Ben? How did you know where Fred was buried? Mrs. Costin says you found the grave. How'd you know where it was? Answer him, Ben. You told me where it was, Ben. I... I saw him burying poor Fred. That's how I knew. If you saw the burial, why didn't you stop Birch then? It wasn't none of my business. But it is now. What made you change your mind so fast? Stay away from that horse, Ben. Get up, get up, get up. Cut him down. You, Bob, cut him down. Uh, I think you'll be coming back to Abilene with me, Ben. You think so? You all right, son? Yeah. Birch? He live. Rest easy, son. You done a good job. But you ain't gonna keep your promise about your brother's killer. There's no sense taking Ben Chaffee back to Abilene. We'll bury him here. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Alan Ladd. Christmas shopping can be fun. It doesn't have to kill one. Give an Autolite stay full battery. Only three times a year do you fill one. <laughs> and that's because the Autolite stay full battery is the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And it's one of more than 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats made by Autolite in 28 plants coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many leading makes of America's finest cars. Electric windshield wipers, starting motors, voltage regulators, coils, distributors, wire and cable, generators, all engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. And because all Autolite parts are original factory parts, you can be sure you're right, because you're always right with Autolite. Alan Ladd will soon be seen in Paramount's Technicolor production, Branded. Next week on Suspense, Mr. Dennis Day, a star of Christmas for Carol. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Cornell Wilde, Ezio Pinza, and Ginger Rogers, all appearing in tales well calculated to keep you in Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. Portions of this program were transcribed. A Killing in Abilene was written for Suspense by Gil Dowd and Anthony Ellis. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Dennis Day in Christmas for Carol. Batteries, Autolite standard type or resistor type spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Better production means better living. That ideal has given America the world's highest standards of living. Learn how you can help to improve our economic life. For the free booklet, The Miracle of America, write Box 10, Times Square Station, New York City. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.